Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is curves? The get curve values node. We are going to look at three value nodes today. We have a get float value, get linear color value, and get vector value. And it's basically a getter node for a value from a curve and one node per curve, since there's three curve types. So let's go ahead and see how they work. They're all going to work the same in terms of the inputs. They're going to take in a target, which is a curve that we want to get the value from, and then the end time, or how much time on that timer, not timer, how much time on that curve, or how far along that curve, or where on that curve we want to get the value. For example, if we pulled up a float curve, and I said, hey, at 1.7 seconds, what is our value? It's going to go along the curve, it's going to find 1.7 seconds, and it's going to give us the value, in this case, 0.79. Now you can use this information to either drive data, for example, like an experience curve for a player in an RPG, or you could use it, for example, to drive something different, like, let's say you want to drive a lerp or you want to drive a color or you want to drive some sort of a physical change over time and you simply need to get the values from the curve over time so in my example what i'm doing here is just taking the delta seconds as i tick outputting that into an elapsed timer you can ignore this math for now i'll explain it in a second but basically i'm getting how much time has elapsed and then if it's gone over a certain amount of time i'm resetting it and then I'm taking that value and plugging it into my curve, getting the value based on that time and outputting it into, for example, a set scalar parameter value here. So if I was to run this example, we're gonna see my item fade in and fade out over two seconds. If we look at our curve, we basically have one for the opacity, so faded in, slides down to faded out, and slides back to faded in. And so we run that, fades out, fades in, fades out, fades in. And because this is a curve, it's really easy to adjust the values. We could, for example, put in another point here and tell it we want it to hang for a lot longer, then instantly drop off and slowly come back in. So if we ran this, you can see that effect. It immediately snaps out and fades back in slowly. And that's all based on the fact that it's driven from a curve and it's pulling the data point using the get float value curve. So for these other things in here, what I've done is I've designed it, if you want to take a look at this example, is I've designed it to, based on the length of the curve and the elapsed timer, and the length of curve is a value I can put in here, I can actually extend how long I want things to happen by using a curve that is basically one second. So if I use a curve that is one second, in this case I grab my one second curve, and you'll see it's the same thing basically, but backwards and only one second for the duration. But by using some math, I can say, okay, well, our length of our curve is one. We'll go ahead and play this. And you'll see it's gonna fade in and out over one second. But we can extend the length of the curve to something like say four and hit play. And you'll get the same effect, except now it's over four seconds. So by designing our curves to meet our goals, in this case, this curve is meant to give us a value that goes from zero to one smoothly. And then using a little bit of math, which you can check out in the example files provided, we can then take our template curve, which is our curve that goes up to down, and then extend its values by just using a little bit of division based on how long we want to go. But we're still using the float value node and we're still getting back the proper value based on what duration or what time or where on this curve we want it to be. Now our other two getters are gonna be pretty much identical. Their outputs will be different and these are pretty simple. We'll go ahead and plug this one in and we're going to go ahead and run this and what we're going to see here is our color changes. As you can see it's going to go from the red and it's going to go into this like orange color. And that one simply due to the fact, let me turn this one back to something like that. There we go. 
And that's simply due to the fact that our linear color curve, which if we take a look at it is right here, is going from a red to an opaque green to like this orangish solid color. And all we're doing is saying, hey, over time, give us that value and change the color of our item. And then we get that, as you can see here. Pretty simple. The last one is going to be our vector. If I plug this one in, hopefully you can see what's going to happen. We're going to take our vector curve. Our vector curve looks like this. We have our Z, our X, and our Y. Over two seconds, we have different sets of data. Using our node, we're basically going to, over time, get that data and tell our actor to move. We hit play, and you'll notice our actor moves. And you'll notice it's actually moving on one direction in the beginning, and then on two directions, or two axes, for the other. And that's all driven by a get node, which is basically getting where on this curve we want a value, and then outputting it to something else. So that's pretty much it. Those are our getter nodes for values for curves. There's one for each curve type. You're going to put in where along that curve you want your value, which curve you want the value from, and then do something with the output. You could use this, for example, in a lerp. You could use it driven from a tick. You could use this, if, for example, a float like we showed earlier. It could be an experience range. Every 0.1 seconds or 0.01 seconds or however far along you want, you have a experience value that you'd want to pull and then use that to assign it to your player. So you can give it a really easily adjustable because, like I showed earlier, rather than having to hard code things, because it's defined inside of a curve, it's really easy to adjust things. Okay, well, this was too harsh. Let me just back it up a little bit and then let me go ahead. Maybe I will break this. Let's go ahead and we're going to go back and flatten that beginning part like we had it, but we're going to make this a little bit smoother like that. And maybe add another curve in here. You can make this something like this. And it just gives you the ability to fine tune and adjust the result and then reuse this curve later. So that is going to wrap up our get curve value nodes.